Hello, it's Alex, the Bookubus. Today I'm going to be talking about all of the books I read in February. I read eight books in total and yeah, generally they were good or great, so I'll call that a decent reading month. First up, I read Elizabeth by Jessica Hamilton, which is a pen name for Ken Greenhall. This is one I read as a buddy read with Anna over at A Blurb from the Serb and also as part of the From Hell book club which is put together by Kelly over at Kelly Hooked on Books. And yeah, I really enjoyed this one. It's one I'd been curious about for a while so I'm really glad I picked it up. It's about a teenage girl called Elizabeth and she starts to believe that she is a witch and has certain powers that she can make certain things happen and one of which is killing her parents and that happens right at the beginning of the book and yeah I don't want to say too much about this one but I really really liked it I really enjoyed his writing style it's the first of Ken Greenhall's books that I've read and I definitely want to read more the voice of Elizabeth I thought was excellently done. She had such a strong voice and there was such a strong tone and feel to the whole book that was just definitely my kind of thing. It made me think a little bit of Mary Cat in We Have Always Lived in the Castle by Shirley Jackson and I know a couple of people in the book club group you know said the same thing. Um, not that it is similar in that respect in other ways but just having this strong young female character um, and just the interesting and unique things that go on in her head I guess. Yeah this book goes to some interesting places and I yeah just really really enjoyed it I don't really know what else to say about it but it is dark in tone um, and just has yeah just that level of unsettling, unnerving type of feel throughout the whole book and there are some somewhat shocking things that play out in the story and there's also an ambiguity to it because you know is this really happening? Does Elizabeth really have the ability to make these things happen or is it all in her head and it's all coincidence? I really really enjoyed this one, I gave it four stars. Next up I read The Shining by Stephen King which is probably one of the most famous horror novels. I don't know if I need to say too much about the plot but essentially it's about a husband and wife and their young son who go to take care of a hotel in the off season. It's in a very remote location and they're going to be snowed in for some months. It's something of a haunted house story and of course there's the very famous Stanley Kubrick film adaptation which I have seen and think is excellent and I was already aware that there are some differences between the book and the film and some people yeah hate one or the other it's a whole thing anyway The Shining is a book I've been meaning to read for a long time but have just just never really got round to but I figured we were still in the winter season and I thought yeah seems like a good time of year to pick it up if I wait any longer I'll probably wait until another winter so anyway glad I picked it up but did I actually enjoy it? Well I felt it was a mixed experience there were definitely certain things I really really liked about the book there were definitely some scenes that I thought were excellent and yeah some unsettling moments, some creepy moments and then also just certain things that play out with the characters and their dynamic and their backstories as well I thought was yeah really well done but on the other side I mean Stephen King likes to go off on his tangents and just really talk about anything at length um, whether it's necessary or not and I think those were the parts that let this book down for me. It just couldn't sustain the flow or momentum because it kept going off on these side stories and tangents and some of them 
I just didn't feel were particularly relevant um, or they just went on too long. Um, so yeah, that for me I think is the big thing that let this one down for me. But like I say, it was a mixed experience. There were some great things and some not so great things. So I ended up rating this one three and a half stars because overall it still balanced out to be a good read for me and I'm glad I read it. But yeah, I'm not sure I was super satisfied with the ending either, not without giving any spoilers of course, but yeah, I'm a, I think a bigger fan of the film. I just think it tells a better story. Overall, I think this one is a bit too uneven for me to, you know, have a stronger opinion of it. Then I read Deadhead by Sean Hudson and I have a bad feeling that this book is gonna mess with my green screen but we're just gonna do it anyway and yeah if I need to put a picture over the mess that's going on there then I will. Um, but this was my first Sean Hudson, definitely won't be my last because I thought this was great and I read this as a buddy read with one over at Plague by Visions. We both had a great time with this one and yeah, so Sean Hudson is a British horror author, someone I've been, yeah, meaning to pick up for ages, glad I finally have and he also has the one of the best author photos ever, so yeah, the book is definitely what you would expect from this author photo. This is about Nick who is a private investigator and he becomes embroiled in a snuff film market and is on the trail to find out who is behind it all. And the thing that pushes the story into high gear is when Nick's daughter who now lives with his ex-wife and her new husband is kidnapped by these snuff entrepreneurs and yeah is is going to be the next star of the next movie so yeah we're introduced to a, an array of different characters along the way we've got like shady businessmen we've got obviously the snuff film people there are a bunch of homeless teenagers there is a character whose sister went missing and he is trying to track her down. There are a lot of characters here but it was really well done. The, it, the story does flit around quite a bit from character to character but I really liked that and the chapters are all pretty short so it was super readable. Like it was just one of those books that yeah you just want to keep reading a little bit more because you just need to know what's happening next. I think for the most part this reads more like a thriller because we have this like, time sensitive situation and there's also like the mystery element of you know who is behind this exactly and is the protagonist going to save the day at the end of the story um, but there are definitely some horror moments in here too. We do get some snuff related scenes that are pretty gnarly and yeah without going into too much detail a, there's a baby that gets involved at some point um, which was was pretty grim um, not quite a Serbian film levels of grim but still heads up for that yeah I just thought this one was great really well paced very gripping interesting story, really good characters. I mean it's still you know kind of trashy, it's not like poetically written or anything like that but he's a good writer and can write a really good story so that makes for a really good book in my opinion. And yeah some of the characters you really grow to feel for and I'm not gonna lie it got emotional uh, in places. I'll just leave it at that. So this one was excellent, I know one enjoyed it as well and uh, yeah I rated this one four stars. I totally neglected to mention that not only was Deadhead a buddy read but it was also a book I read as part of the 
my bloody valentine readathon which was hosted by coral over at pretty and paper cuts so yeah that book fit a couple of the prompts for that and the other book i read for that readathon was the window by carol ellis this is a point horror book and it's about a teenage girl who is going on a skiing trip um, but the interesting setup is that she was supposed to be going with a friend and a bunch of people her friend knows but her friend ends up getting ill and our main character doesn't want to miss out on this kind of trip of a lifetime so she ends up going along but she doesn't really know these other teenagers that she's going with and is going to be staying with so I thought that was quite an interesting setup and made for an interesting dynamic as she's getting to know all of these different people and at some point she ends up seeing something happen in the cabin or chalet next to theirs uh, through the window and then she starts to suspect the different people that she's staying with and could one of them possibly have any involvement in it this was a good one i enjoyed it i thought it was a solid point horror I rated it three and a half stars and yeah I didn't guess who the culprit was at the end so I thought that was well done and yeah it was just quite an interesting one even though it might not be the most original setup in the sense of like the rear window type of scenario but I still thought the author did something different with that idea and yeah the way the story played out it had some really good tension and yeah, it was just a good, enjoyable point horror. Then I read a short story collection called The Sharp End of the Rainbow by Madeline Swan, which is a, such a great title. And this was a new release that came out in February and I was sent a copy of it by the publisher. So full disclosure, I guess, but honest review, of course. I thought this one was excellent. Madeline Swan is a fellow YouTuber, so I will leave a link to her channel if you aren't already subscribed. And I had already read one short story by her, which was in the New Flesh anthology that Weird Punk Books put out a couple of years ago. Loved that collection and hers, the story of hers that was in that collection was one of my favourites of, of that collection. Can I say collection <laughs> one more time? So. Yeah, anyway, that story, I think it's called Typhoid Ananya, if I'm remembering correctly, was also in The Sharp End of the Rainbow. I read it again, because why not? And it was still excellent. And yeah, this was such a weird and wonderful collection of short stories. I love Madeline Swan's style, and she has quite a varied array of writing styles that she works with, and she does all of them excellently. So some of these are really short, you know, just a couple of pages. Some of these are longer short stories and some of them are maybe more bizarro, a bit wacky, a bit humorous, whereas some of them are more serious and some of them got really dark. Some of them had an emotional element to them. There was at least one that, yeah, made me feel yeah kind of like a punch in the gut at the end of it um which is always fun um a couple of them are historical type period pieces and i thought yeah she really set the era for those i really did think this one was excellent i rated it four stars and yeah even though there's a lot of kind of different styles of storytelling within the collection they all still felt very Madeline Swan if that makes sense so yeah if that sounds interesting to you I would highly recommend picking that one up after that I read another short story collection which also happened to be sent to me by the publisher this is Spontaneous Human Combustion by Richard Thomas and this one also came out in February and full disclosure I do know Richard um, we go back some years, we both used to be on The Cult, which was Chuck Palahniuk's forum many moons ago, and we actually met up as part of a group meetup uh, back in New York City quite some years ago, which was really, really fun. So yeah, so I do know Richard, um, 
but yeah again my review is my honest thoughts on the book and yeah this was another excellent short story collection this one I think is much darker in general than Madeline Swans. This one, yeah, feels a lot more serious and dark overall. Um, I'd say a couple of them really feel like horror stories and then some of them are maybe more speculative, some have more of a fantasy vibe, some more of science fiction, um, there's like a bit of kind of noir vibes in a couple of them as well. And yeah, Richard is a super talented writer and storyteller. His stories are really evocative and immersive. Um, the detail and the descriptions are really well done. The characters and the feelings come through really, really strongly. And yeah, again, like even though there's quite a bit of variety here within the content of the stories, yeah, they all felt <laughs> very much Richard Thomas. So yeah, it's always really interesting to see that come through in a short story collection. And at the end of the book he does talk a little bit about each of the stories, so that was an interesting addition to the collection. And yeah, this was another four star read for me. If you're looking for a collection of dark fiction, not, not necessarily all horror, but dark in general, then I highly recommend this one. And last up, I had a couple of days left of February, so I thought, why not pick up a short book? And I went with Missing by R.L. Stein, which is part of the Fear Street series. And I know my friend Brandon has recommended this one to me. So yeah, thank you, Brandon, for the recommendation. I enjoyed this one. This is about a brother and sister who have only recently moved to Fear Street. And one day, their parents just don't come home from work. So they think, they must just be working late, let's not panic just yet, but the next day there's still no sign of them, and yeah, some things that they uncover make, th make the situation seem like something untoward might have happened. So yeah, one thing I thought was interesting about this is we do get chapters told from both the brother and the sister characters. So that was really cool. And yeah, this was an interesting story. It's hard to say too much more about it, but obviously they're trying to uncover where on earth their parents have got to and why. Um, and then, yeah, there's some like weird stuff that's happening, which they're trying to deal with as the story goes along. And this definitely went to a place that I was not expecting. So that was really cool. I really enjoyed that. It was a, yeah, really good ending. So yeah, this was another good one. I enjoyed it. I rated it three and a half stars. So that was everything I read in February. I can't believe we're in March already. It's, yeah, time is just flying. I hope you all had a good February. Do let me know if there's any of these books you've also read. I would love to hear your thoughts about them, whether we agree or disagree. And yeah, if you read anything awesome recently, I would love to hear about that too. Thank you ever so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed it, and hopefully I will see you again in my next video. Bye!